It's something you never imagined could happen to you. A man holds your family hostage until you can give him the money and goods he demands. That's what police say happened in Durham this week, the final act in a series of violent crimes believed to have been committed by the same suspect. But tonight, many we're hearing from aren't so much focused on what happened as to why it took so long for them to hear about it. Our AJ Janabelle joins us live with their concerns. AJ. Sharon, police say that Rollin Owens committed four crimes similar to the one that you just mentioned over a four day period. The first one happened on Saturday and the last one happened yesterday. But police didn't give any information to the public until Tuesday evening. And a lot of the people I spoke to told me today that that fact worries them. In a quiet Durham neighborhood with white picket fences and flowers in front yards, Police say 29-year-old Rollin Owens approached a man who was leaving Birch Avenue Park with his two young children. And police say Owens put a gun to the man's head and forced the man to drive him to an ATM to withdraw cash and to a convenience store. That incident happened Saturday morning. Durham police notified the community of the incident four days later on Tuesday. And during that time, police say Owens committed three similar crimes. I would like to think that we would have found out about it a little bit sooner. Um, from someone um, other than you knocking on my door telling me about it. Sad and scary that this would happen in our neighborhood and it is sad and scary that it has taken several days to find out any more information. Both Nancy McCaig and Lucia Foster live feet away from Birch Avenue Park where the first incident happened. They ask why they had to wait so long to hear about these crimes in their neighborhood. So I took their concerns to Durham police officials and asked why the community was not notified sooner. Will Glenn with the Durham Police Department told me via email, investigators were working to follow up on the information and determine if the incidents were connected. However, the first incident and the second incident were more than 14 hours apart. In previous news releases from Durham police, they've notified of situations within the same day or in sometimes within hours. I followed up with Glenn via email asking how determining a connection affects releasing information to the public and what, if any, general policy there is for information releases. But I've not heard back yet. So today I did ask for on-camera interviews with Durham police officials. However, they declined that request. And I also reached out to every single member of the Durham City Council, including the mayor, as well as the Durham City Manager, to hear what their thoughts are on this situation. The ones that got back to me told me that they would reach out to police officials, but they did tell me that this is a police matter and to speak with them. Sharon, when we hear more information about why it took this long to get this information to the public, we'll keep you up to date. Now, as far as Owen is concerned, he is being held on a $1 million bond. Reporting live here in Durham, I'm AJ Janivelle for CBS North Carolina.